Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon and this is Chewy the dog on the bed. I had a little exchange with Peter Wells yesterday on Twitter which led me to rifling through his chess games and looking for an interesting one to feature. And there are so many interesting ones because Peter is someone who plays fascinating tactics, he wants to play the critical line, he wants to do interesting things at the board. He's not one of these guys who wants to grind out a slight positional advantage over 30 moves. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but that's not really his style. Um, and this game is a classic example of fire on the board. It's against Jonathan Spielman in the Staunton Memorial in 2006. John Spielman is one of the greatest players to come out of the UK. He was number four in the world at one point. Um, he qualified twice for the candidates tournament. He really, really knows what he's doing. Um, and this is the modern defence. He wrote a book, John Spielman wrote a book on the modern in 1999 and this game includes some of the ideas from that book. So let's dive into it. Um, also I should say that Peter Wells wrote a book recently, a book called Chess Improvement, which I think looks like a great book. Um, I have not been paid to say this by any means, not been paid to do any of this. Um, but um looks like a great book. It's all about improvement in chess. It's all about um, the mindset approach, how to learn from failure, something I know a lot about. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. I'll be buying it myself. So let's just dive into this game then. Uh, Peter is white, so he starts the game with e4. g6 from Spearman, which is the classic way to start the modern defense. I mean, you can also get into it from d6 or even c6, but um, the most common way is g6. D4 from white, that is the standard approach. Bishop G7 makes sense. Now you've made this fianchetto for the bishop, makes sense to put it in there. White plays knight C3. I mean, it's not the only move. You can play um, pawn C4 here and kind of transpose into queen's pawn type systems. But I guess since white played E4, then it makes sense to play knight C3. It's kind of consistent. Black plays uh, pawn to c6. Now this is interesting. This is heading towards a hybrid of the Karakhan and the modern defence. My basic view of the world is I think the Karakhan's a brilliant opening, as is the modern. But it's sort of possible to like broccoli and to like ice cream, but not to be so sure about broccoli ice cream. And I think this is one of those cases. I like the Karakhan, I like the modern. This particular opening I looked at quite a bit. And it feels to me not quite working. I mean, I suppose my view of the world is I know where the counterplay is coming from in the modern. It's basically coming from pressure on, on d4 or sometimes on e4. I know where the counterplay is coming from in the caro. It's basically queen side counterplay. In some of these lines, I'm not quite so sure, but let's take a look. White plays knight f3, could play f4 there, and a player like Peter, you could imagine playing f4 d5 from black, so there's still time for black to play d6 and go back into a more traditional modern line, but Spearman's going for it, d5, h3 from white, I'd be tempted to play e5, but actually it's a bit early for white to play e5, h3 is a good move, not fearing black taking on e4, white would just take back with a knight, and then black plays knight f6, this is provocative, uh, tempts white to play pawn e5, which is a good move, Knight moves to e4, and then white plays bishop d3. So that knight's now attacked twice, uh, needs to make a decision. So it exchanges itself on c3. This creates a weakness in the white pawn structure, but also creates attacking lines for white. So it's a classic trade. Black plays c5, I guess in the style of the French winner, really. Just trying to get at those weaknesses on the white queen side, um, trying to expand on the queen side. White castles, very sensibly get the king out of the centre. And then black just pushes on, so actually there's only one move here that doesn't lose a piece for white. And he plays it. But what black's done is fixed that weakness on, on c3 and more broadly just fix those double pawns. Attacking the pawn chain at the head. So Nimzovic always said you should attack a pawn chain at the base, but um, in modern chess, quite frequently people attack pawn chains from the head. I mean, I think even in Nimzovic's era they used to. 
Um, and you see this in the uh, French advanced variation. You see this in the in the King's Gambit. Uh, whenever there's an advanced pawn on e5, I think Black certainly considers playing f6 to get rid of it or to challenge it, put pressure on it. In this case, it does get rid of it because White exchanges. Black takes back um, on f6. This does look a little bit passive, doesn't it? You know, now that bishop's sort of blocked in, there's weaknesses around the king, slight worries here, but, you know, white doesn't have that many pieces out, so maybe it's okay. White gets one out, bishop a3, good move, stops black castling. Black plays uh, king f7, so doesn't really need to castle, because actually, all you've got to do is bring the rook onto the, um, well, either the e file or the f file, you can't take it on the f-file because the bishop will take it onto the e-file or, or maybe the d-file and then the king can run to safety. Rook b1 just getting onto that open file. Queen a5 is a really good move so attacking that pawn weakness I would uh, be tempted here to play bishop b4 and actually the engine quite likes bishop b4. Uh, defending the pawn with tempo. Queen can't take on a2. Uh, that queen's going to get trapped. In fact, I've looked at this with the engine. The queen does get trapped if it takes on a2. So bishop b4 is, is certainly a reasonable move here. Um, I'm not sure it's a refutation of queen a5, but it's a reasonable move. White doesn't want to do any of that sort of safe, tempo-seeking nonsense. <laughs> bishop takes c4. Now, this is a mind-boggling move. This is one of the most interesting moves you'll see in chess. Uh, so, gives up a minor piece, and it's really not obvious what the follow-up here is. I mean, I suppose if it was me, I would say, well, rookie one, threatening rookie seven, maybe, and that does look like quite a good move. But White's played queen e2. Now, actually, rookie one, the problem with rookie one is, is dropping the bishop on a3, and actually the same applies to queen e2. It's sacrificing a second piece. Um, so this is really high stakes now. I mean, this is a classic example of kind of give checkmate or lose. Um, in fact, when you look at it with the engine, black is able to take that bishop on a3. I think with best analysis, this is going to be a draw if black takes on a3. But the, the king is so exposed and... Um, you know, White's major pieces are so mobile that that feels really scary. And I suppose Black may even be suspecting a preparation here because we're only on move 15. So I think um, Black may... I mean, this is 2006, so the use of computers wasn't as extreme. But um, Black may wonder if White's in prep here. I wonder if White was in prep. I mean, it's it's hard to know. It may may have been. Peter, please let us know, either via Twitter or in the comments or, or whichever. Um, but, I mean, Peter's good enough to be playing on instinct here, but he might be prep. Black plays the engine move, queen c7. Makes a lot of sense just defending that pawn on, on c4, which would, of course, have gone with check. White doubles on the e-file. Um... It's a very, very logical move. Just controlling those squares on the e-file, creating all sorts of threats. Now, under pressure, and this is completely understandable, black has played um, bishop f8. I think the fact that white was constantly controlling that e7 square uh, was a real source of stress for for black. And certainly, one would have to... to if it was White's move now, one would have to look very closely at the check on um, um, e7. Should we try and do it in our heads? I'm doing this without the engine. So in our heads, if it, of course the engine won't look at this because he's missing a move. So you go queen e7, queen takes, rook takes. So king g8 looks to be virtually forced. I think if you go king f8, then uh, White has at least a draw. Uh, king g8, rook e8, and then if you want more than a draw, you've got to put the bishop in the way, but that's not going to work because you just take it off with a rook or the bishop. So I suspect that, um, you know what we're going to do now, just because I can't help it, we're going to flick the engine on and we're going to play pawn a6 
and just see. Okay, so look at that. Rook takes b7 as a forced mate. Isn't that fascinating? Um, so would queen e7 have been a good move? Yeah, forces a draw. Okay, takes. Takes king g8. You see, this was such an amazing... Um, sorry, king g8. Yeah, it's forcing a draw, which is actually what we did see. What we didn't see here is that rook takes b7, flat out wins. Okay, and so if the bishop takes, is it the check on e6? That's the problem, it is the check on e6, isn't it? If the bishop takes, you've got a check on e6, which is mate. And if the queen takes, I mean, it's beautiful stuff. If the queen takes, oh, it's a c4 check. Look, look at all the weaknesses. Weak diagonal, yuck. Beautiful business. So here, stunning. Rook takes b7. It's a stunning win. Um, so this is why Black was worried. And, you know, Spielman is in a different league to me, obviously. And this was a good idea, except that Queen E8 is a horror show, actually. The only move that's even viable is King G7, but then this bishop's coming with check, and the check here is effectively end of days. Queen could take, but that's sacking the queen, and there's not much hope for black in that position. Spielman played here, but then you can just sack the queen and take here. White is an exchange up, and in terms of pawns, a pawn up, a passed pawn up. So at this level, uh, that is over. So uh, just a fascinating uh, piece of pyrotechnics, really. I think, of course, the, um, the big moment is to sacrifice one piece, knowing that you're prepared to sacrifice a second piece. And uh, you're left with a position, this position... Uh, I mean, actually, the engine, of course, it's easy sitting here with an engine. The engine wants to play rook d8, where it looks like black might, well, can obtain a draw, uh, certainly with best play after rook d8. So, okay, we're going to look at it because we're interested. So after rook d8, so, so the engine still wants to play rook b7, but here the queen can take, and then after the check, the rook goes in the way. I see. The rook goes in the way. And then you can either do this. Queen takes. Check. Oh, actually, look, no. You've got to go this way. You've got to take this way. And then, okay, so this crazy complex position is petering out to a draw. Bishop e6 is petering out to a draw. Um, but, you know, seeing this stuff uh, is incredibly hard, unless you're running an engine. So there was a, a drawing line, rook d8, and then uh, black has a defence against queen takes c4, and the defence is to block with the rook. Uh, but that is in the realms of sort of not for the faint-hearted, really. So, a really interesting game. There's lots of other interesting games that Peter played. I mean, one against Alexei Shirov, who, again, is an absolute mastermind of tactics. And another quick win. Maybe we'll feature that uh, again in the future. But for today, we've said a great win for white. Actually, potentially interesting system for black. I mean, this, this doesn't reflect the potential of the system. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting system for black. But today... Uh, it didn't quite work out. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm now going to take Chewy for a walk. It's 20 past four. It's a beautiful day. I hope all well with you and we'll see you soon.